I was using the same thing. So I was sort of sitting back for a while and watching people play pool. All the boys there, they were so good at it. And I was just amazed how good they were at it. And I thought, boy, if I could get that good, because I noticed that people were interacting with each other, there was a sense of camaraderie between, between, between each other, and I felt like, well, I, I wanted some of that too. And so when I started out, it seemed like, which was correct, everybody was better than I was. No matter how much I was trying in the beginning, I, I felt like I was, you know, was just not getting anywhere. But I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna really, really focus on playing pool. And so every day, five hours a day, I would go, the minute I got into the boys club, I would go to the pool table and I'd practice playing pool. Day after day after day, hours after hours after hours. And as time went on, I got better and better and better at it. And then that's when some of the, the you know, at that point I still didn't have any friends. I basically were, I was basically playing with people who would incline to play with me. But at some point, some of the better players start to notice that, hmm, that little weird kid with his bad haircut and bad fashion seemed to be beating a lot of people. And so they came over to me and, um, and they, you know, they start to engage me a little bit more. And, um, you know, I remember the first person that I met was, um, that I really, it really stuck, was a kid by the name of Egato. Egato was, was a Cuban American who was born in the United States. And he's a heavy set kid. Sort of, if you saw him, you'd think he was some, uh, maybe a blonde kid. While his brother, on the other hand, had jet black hair and looked Italian. It was sort of like the odd couple of brothers. And um, I remember Egato came over to play with me and he was surprised how good I was already. And he had this thing about the way he played. He would, you know, and he's pick up a big, it was disgusting. And then they'd put it on the table to mark a spot. And then he'd use that as a marker and he would hit that uh, the, the pool ball in. And I'm like, that is so disgusting that you're doing that. <laughs> but it worked for him. And there, by the time you're finished, there'd be all these little phlegm marks all over the table. It was gross, but he was good at it. And eventually, um, I really, you know, we start, we began, we, 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 we became quick friends. And um, one of the things I'll say about, about him is that, is that Egato really mattered to me in my childhood, in my first few years of being here. Because, you know, it, he was the first guy that I met that didn't judge me because of how bad my fashion was, how strange my haircut was, the fact that I was wearing dress slacks with dress shoes and sweat socks um, and, a, and a dress shirt coming to the boys club. Yeah, like that, really messed up. He never judged me for that. He sort of just took, took me in. I was, he was actually younger than I am, probably about maybe about a year, year and a half. And um, and so, you know, we started to talk a lot to, with each other and we'd come, you, I, you know, I couldn't wait to get to the gym and then we'd play pool. And, you know, and while, you know, when he wasn't around, I was basically practicing and practicing and practicing. And then eventually what happened is that I started to become really good. And that's when the sharks start to sh start showing up. And, and, and at that point, um, you know, the, the, um, they, they showed up and one by one, I started beating every single one of them. And, and, and at that point, um, I started to hang out with Agato a little bit more and he lived just right around the corner, just a few blocks over on Commonwealth Avenue in Boston, which is a very, very famous street in Boston, in, in Boston it has about 300 university or something like that, that something like that. And, it, um, and so it was pretty much a college town sort of environment. And so, I, I, so I'd go over to Agato's house. He lived in an apartment there with his family. And we would just sit out on the steps out front and we would just shoot the shit all day long. And in terms of that, he actually um, started to introduce me to a lot of his friends and so I started to get to know his friends and then they would show up at the boys club and they would start to interact a little bit more and still I still had bad fashion still had messed up haircut uh, etc but as time went on you know I remember one day him pointing out you know what's with what's with the dress slacks and dress shoes <laughs> and it was in that moment that I realized that he wasn't mean about it he was just pointed out to me and um, and I was just like, well, that's how I dress. But I realized at that point that I needed to do something about it. And so 
um, I started to talk, talk to my mom about maybe getting some different clothes, etc. Um, one of the other thing is that um, I also, um, while I was playing pool at the boys club, I also met this other white kid and his name was Keith. And Keith, um, he was a really, really nice kid um, for the sake of, you'll understand what I'm, where I'm going, why I'm throwing the race thing in there a little bit. Keith was a, was a white kid, white American kid, and he was, he was about, he was tall, and he had sort of a stereotypical American haircut, you know, for, for the day. And he was a cool kid. And, you know, we got along well, 